Good morning, class. Good morning, Brother Keith. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and we welcome you to Faith School. Faith School is the place where my spirit is fed, where my faith grows stronger, and I learn how to be an overcomer. You might say, why, why do you say that every time? Because that's what's happening. Every time, and we don't want to wait halfway through to kind of get warmed up and start doing it. We want it to happen First off, we are getting built up. We are getting stronger. And um, we don't have to know all the particulars. We know it's the will of God. And we're making ourselves available for these few minutes completely to Him for that to happen. He'll do it. He does it every time. He's faithful. Get your Bible. Get something to make a note with. Come on into the classroom with us. And let's release our faith to get exactly what we need Right now, Father, in Jesus' name, all of us agree together as touching this, asking you for the utterance, the anointing, the quickening of your spirit, uh, exactly what you know we need to see, hear, and know, and do. Anything we've thought wrong about, uh, help us to see the truth and make the correction. Anything we've not known, reveal it to us. Anything we've forgotten, remind us of it, please. And we purpose to be not forgetful hearers, but doers in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you look please in Luke, the 13th chapter again. Uh, we've been in this study we're calling Faith for Healing. And uh, we're taking the individual accounts of healing in Jesus' ministry one by one. And we're down to number uh, 16 in our study the healing of the woman with the spirit of infirmity. And we see this Luke 13 and 10. Let's read it again. Said he, Jesus, was teaching in one of the synagogues on the, uh, the Sabbath. And uh, behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said to her, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. The ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day, and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work, in them therefore come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, You hypocrite, does not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, lo, these eighteen years be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? And when he said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed, and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. Thank you, Lord. How many appreciate the Lord recording this for us? It's, uh, it's wonderful. It's, not, it's history, but it's not just history. It's living words that affect us and apply to us today. The woman had a condition that caused her to be bent over, not able to stand up straight. She's like this for 18 years. The scripture tells us it was a spirit involved. Now, uh, people hear that, and some folks just don't believe it at all. They just scoff and mock and say, spirits? Yep, give me a break. They don't believe anything they, they can't touch. But... Um, you know, some of the same people they say they respect in scientific study, those that study physics, those that study, they talk about things that are unseen. <laughs> they talk about 
uh, energy and matter and even dark energy and dark matter. What does that mean? You can't see it. And the more we learn from a scientific standpoint, the more we realize there are unseen forces. There are unseen realities. Uh, no thinking person will deny this. Uh, you can't look or examine a thought under a microscope. <laughs> what is a thought? Then are you going to say it's not real? Thoughts don't exist? Feelings, emotions. You, can't, you may see the body's reaction to it, but you can't see it. Look with me, if you would, in the third chapter of John and see what Jesus said about this that's so enlightening. John 3, the first verse, it said there was a man named Nicodemus. He was a ruler of the Jews, but he was the exception. He was somebody that was open and wanted to know more. And he came to Jesus. Jesus told him in verse 3, except a man be born again, he can't see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus said, you know, how, how can that be? In verse 5, Jesus said, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Is spirit just as real as flesh? There is spirit and there is flesh. That's what he's saying. He said, marvel not that I say to you, you must be born again. The wind blows. Now here he gives us insight into spiritual matters by, by referring to something that all of us have been in contact with, the wind. The wind blows where it listeth, and you hear the sound thereof, but you cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. This describes spirit. What is wind? First of all, who has ever experienced wind? <laughs> I don't, you know, what human being hasn't felt a breeze, right? Everything from a light, light breeze to a heavy, strong wind during a stormy condition. So we, I mean, no intelligent person is going to deny that wind exists. But what is wind? What is it? So Mrs. says, well, it's, it, it's wind. Yeah, it's <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's why, he, that's why he brings it up. There, there's revelation here if you'll make the connection. And why is he talking about wind? He said, that's the way the spirit is. And I'd, I'd say also that's the way spiritual things are. Wind is air in motion. But something is pushing the air. Something you can't see. Something that is not, you know, discernible by most of your senses. What is pushing the wind? Well, there are pressure gradients that are involved. There's the rotation of the earth. <laughs> There's gravity. Um, there's a number of things, but there are things that you can't see. Gravity is only now just beginning to be partly understood. People thought they understood it years ago and come to find out it's nothing like what they thought it was. Well, gravity is unseen, right? Oh, but what a force. <laughs> what a power, right? Gravity. And so He's saying there's something behind what you can see. There's something behind the wind. And there's something behind this natural physical realm. There's something behind your eyes. <laughs> huh? And it's not just some gray matter and some uh, electrical you know, synapses going on. There's something behind that. And people say, uh, you know, what, what makes your heart beat? 
People say, oh, there's, there's regions of the brain and, and there's the, okay, what's behind that? What's making that work? Well, see, that's something you can't see. People say, well, it's just the mystery of life. Yeah, like I said, <laughs> it's, it, it's the creation of God and it's spirit. Whether you, whether you call it by the right name or not, that's what it is. It's spirit. And so there are unseen spiritual influences all around us. There are things going on. And when you, uh, you can be going along and everything's fine. And all at once you have a bad feeling. <laughs> Just a bad, yucky feeling. And there's no reason for it. You know what that is? That's a spiritual influence. Something's trying to get you down. Something's trying to influence you. And if you're not smart and not aware, you'll just go, I don't know why I don't feel good. I just, I just, I, y'all go on without me. I just don't feel, I just don't feel, feel, feel. Well, what kind of feeling are you talking about? What kind of feeling? Yeah, maybe now it's affecting you emotionally and physically, but something instigated that. Something's behind that. Something started that. We're not supposed to just yield to every thought and every emotion and every feeling. Even though it may be strong and real, it doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it good. There are things we're supposed to resist. We're supposed to say, no, shut up. Get out of here, <laughs> right? I don't care how I feel. I am not yielding to this, Amen. right? There are times you need to grab yourself by the back of the neck. Is that right? And say, get up, boy. Here we go. You need to straighten up. God's done too much for you, for you to lay around and whine and cry and complain, Amen. right? Amen. Come on, here we go. And you get the word in your mouth. And you start rejoicing even though you don't feel like it. You start giving thanks even though you don't feel like it. And what happened is that influence will have to leave. You resist the enemy. And what the Bible say, he will flee from you. But if you don't know what's going on, you just yield to everything that comes along and act like you have no control and act like it's not up to you. Act like spiritual influences don't exist. Well, I don't know the whole story but this spirit, spiritual influence, came to this woman sometime in the past, 20 years ago. And you'll find that the enemy is a persistent cuss. I mean, he will, he, he will work on something on you for 20 years, trying to get you to yield to it. He'll keep bringing the thoughts, keep, keep bringing the feelings. And in the beginning, maybe you know that ain't right. You, you know that's not what you should have. And so you resist it and it leaves you. But it'll come back. He'll come back. Maybe not today or next week, but come back. If you're smart, you'll never give in to it. Right? But the reason he's so persistent is because again and again, he, people wear down. And he'll get them to start yielding to it. So at some point, a uh, place was given, probably a lot through ignorance in this woman's life. And it got worse and worse and worse until she is completely uh, restricted, completely bound. And we see how much the spiritual influence was involved because when Jesus said, you are loosed and touched her, it didn't take her a week to get better. Well, can you see that? When the spiritual influence was released, she's instantly better. Yes. And, and I shouldn't say better, instantly free. Yes. She's not just improved. Mm -hmm. Immediately, she was made straight and glorified God. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes. Well, do you reckon there are any cases like that today? Oh yeah, where spiritual influences have wormed their way in to people's lives, into their thinking, and, and people have just gotten passive, and people have gotten depressed and defeated and not realize it, but they're giving in, they're giving in, things are getting worse, they're giving in more, and finally they just get hopeless and just give in completely and quit trying, and they don't realize 
that the reason they've got this continual, you know, bad feeling and depressed and confused is spiritual influence. And the good news is, as a child of God, you can run that off today. You you can put a stop to that. You have been delivered from all the power of darkness. And you've been translated into the kingdom of God's dear son. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he whom the son has made free, he's free indeed. When Jesus said, you're loosed, was that just for her? Or did he want everybody to be loosed? That's why he came. That's why he went to the cross. Look with me in, uh, in Matthew, if you would, the 16th chapter. And Jesus gives some of the most significant Uh, words concerning how we operate in the kingdom of God. In in Matthew 16 and 19, he's talking about building his church and how the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Now, what does that mean? Gates were the place of authority. It was also where the elders came and had meetings and, and made decisions. So gates represent authority and power. He said, verse 19, I will give to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Keys represent authority. He's talking about authority, and he's talking about spiritual authority, authority over spiritual things and concerning spiritual things. The power or the right to bind or loose. Now, the woman was bound. And what did Jesus do? Loosed her. (laughs) That word bind is the same word translated to tie up or to chain up. It, it, the, the literal picture of it, same words used of tying up a donkey or chaining a prisoner. And so she was, uh, and you'll see this, sickness is being tied up. Disease is bondage to whatever degree it restricts you and limits you. Is it God's will for us to be bound in any degree? Well, if you you hesitate on that, remember the rest of the passage. Jesus said, shouldn't this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, be loosed? Jesus said it was the devil that bound her, and she ought to be set free. We going to agree with Jesus? Or a bunch of goofy religious tradition (laughs) that people have come up with? No, if somebody's sick... No matter how they got that way, no matter how bad it is, no matter how long it's been that way, they ought to be set free, according to Jesus. And it's the enemy who's in the binding and restricting uh, business, not God. Jesus is in the loosing. I said loosing business. And you know what the ministry is? It's Jesus and sons. Is that right? And daughters. And so... uh, we are, by connection with him, also in the loosing business. Amen. Come on, say it out loud. I'm in the loosing business. business. What does that mean? Liberating business. <laughs> set free business. Amen. Right? Yes. Loosing. And when you're healed, you're set free. Mm-hmm. When you've been oppressed with emotional problems and confusion, and that's gone, you're set free. Mm-hmm. When you've been bound up with poverty, and, and then you get plenty, you've been set free. Amen. Right? When you've been bound with condemnation and shame and guilt for your mistakes and then you receive forgiveness and righteousness, you've been set free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're in the loosing business, in the liberating business. In 1 John 3, it tells us that this is why Jesus came. Turn there and look if you would. 1 John 3, and one of the reasons I say uh, turn and look Is because uh, it's not just me knowing it that's going to help you. (laughs) Right? (laughs) You got to know it for yourself. And and one way you show respect to the word is you take the time. 
you make the effort to find it on the page. You look at it. You respect it. You may even want to mark what stood out to you. Uh, you should have your own Bible. You should read it. You should, you should know what he said. If, if that's too much for you or you can't be bothered with that, then you won't be helped with a lot of things either. It's just not important enough. This is your answer. This is your help. Right? There wouldn't be a faith school without this. Right? <laughs> this is it. This is it. His word is the truth that makes free. In 1 John 3 and 8, the latter part of it says, For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. That's a big statement. Why, why did Jesus come on the scene? Why did Jesus come? That's a big statement. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. Why? That he might destroy the works of the devil. Did you know that's the same word Jesus said, you're loosed? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> the word is, it, this says destroy, but a lot of times it's translated undo or untie or unbind or loose. And of course that, that agrees perfectly. Don't we see him doing that? Yes. We see him doing that. What's he going? He's going about undoing what the devil did. Yes. Right? Yes. Who bound the woman for 18 years? Huh? The, there's no question about this. Now, you know, people can try to debate and say, well, you know, maybe God sent it to teach her something. Don't you contradict Jesus? He said it as clearly as you can say it. J Jesus said, Satan had bound the woman. So don't you tell us God did. Right? We're not going to buy it. How many staying with Jesus? I'm staying. If he said the devil bound her, then that's it. It was the devil. Who loosed her? Jesus. Who's binding people up, messing up their lives, stealing, killing, and destroying? Not God. Not God. It's the devil. Oh, but who's setting them free? I said, who's setting them free? Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He was loosening them and letting them go then, and he's still loosening them and letting them go today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm glad to be in the loosening business with Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm glad to be in the liberating, yes. untying, yes. undoing. Look in, look in Acts, uh, the 10th chapter. Acts 10. For this purpose, that scripture said. You know, mark that one. Don't let it get away from you. That 1 John 3 that we just looked at. Um, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. The King James says that he might destroy. And that's not a, a wrong translation. That's how he undid it. <laughs> and it was by the power of God and by the authority of his spoken word that what the enemy had, had infiltrated and bound these people with, it was broken, it was destroyed, and they were set free. So both words are correct. But it, to me it was eye-opening that when he says loosed, and then First John says that's why he came, was to loose, same word, loosing. And you see that in Acts 10.38. Acts 10.38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing what? Good. good, only good. He didn't do any bad. And doing good and healing. Is healing good? Yes. Healing doing good? Yes. Well, you see, that is the, the question that came up over and over again about healing on the Sabbath. And what Jesus would ask them, well, is it good to heal on the Sabbath or evil? To do good or do evil on the Sabbath? That was Jesus' question to them. And so he calls healing good and not uh, people not being healed when they could be healed, that's evil. That's bad. 
That's not confusing. No. Right? <laughs> Is it? <laughs> you know, it's the enemy that makes things confusing. God is a good God. He does good things. Period. The devil is a bad devil. He does bad things. They never swap jobs. They never work together. Never. God, good. Devil, bad. Are we clear, class? Come on. This will be on the test. <laughs> so say, what test? You will be tested on this material. It'll be right after class. <laughs> It'll be the rest of your life, right? <laughs> it won't be a test that I give. But I want you to pass this test. One more time. God? Good. good. Devil? Bad. Bad. <laughs> Not confusing. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So now we see it was not just this one woman, her sickness was satanically connected. Everybody that had any kind of disease or sickness, it was, even if a spirit wasn't there personally involved, it was still the work of the enemy. It was still the work of the evil one. All sickness is satanic work. Yes. All disease is satanic work. Works, uh, satanic oppression, if you want to be specific here. All disease is satanic oppression. Mm -hmm. Never is it the will of God. Never is sickness a blessing in disguise. It's always a curse. It's always an evil work. A bad thing. And Jesus is in the business of undoing it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Of loosing and setting free. He was that way. He never changes. He still is that way. And we're joining him. Amen. On the loosing committee. <laughs> On the loosing team. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Going all over the world. Proclaiming the good news, and part of that good news is to proclaim deliverance to the captives to tell them, You are free. You are free. Say it out loud, I'm free. I'm free. We're, free. We're free. You're free. We're free. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And our time's up again today. As you can see, we're not done. Come back tomorrow. We'll see you soon here in Faith School. I've got no Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today, but you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941-702-7390.